Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Olette and Casey Berman. Hi there, I'm Casey Berman. Welcome back to the Love or Leave the Law podcast. So happy to have you for this episode. Um, My co-host and I, Adam, have a great topic today. We're picking up on how to fall back in love with the law. Uh, We've talked about, we're talking about seven steps to do so. Uh, We're on step three today, uh, diving into step four, five, six, seven in the upcoming episodes. So be sure to check those out. Um, And step one and two, uh, we've recorded. Please check those out already at Love or Leave Law Podcast on iTunes, on YouTube, and everywhere that you can find it. Um, Adam, how are you today? I'm doing great, Casey. Thanks for uh, being here with me. I appreciate you and uh, all of your advice for everybody today. Isn't it great having everyone on here? I just oh, love yeah. it. I, I love this podcast. I love this community. It's growing so much more and uh, just really, really having a great time doing this. We've had some great feedback from uh, readers and listeners and people who've written in, uh, joining our Facebook group, talking about experiences they've had in, in exploring outside the law, in refreshing their practice, and really just asking questions. So uh, really exciting for me when, when you see that tangible result uh, in people who are, who are listening to it, who are watching it. So it uh, just makes my day, makes my day. Today, very excited. What I want to do is uh, dive in. I'm going to hand it to to Adam in a sec. But what we're going to talk about today is something that I know so many uh, people in general, but particularly attorneys, uh, struggle with or or have limiting beliefs about or aren't really sure to do, which is really about growing their business. And I know in law school, there really wasn't a how to start a law firm class, uh, how to network class, how to connect with clients class. Sure, we had torts and we had property and Blackacre and IP and we learned all this stuff. And so we were the subject matter expert, but there really wasn't any class, any insight. Um, And one class wouldn't do it. You need this ongoing, but there really wasn't any training around how to build a business. And then we get thrown out in the world and hey, start a firm, deal with insurance, uh, deal with clients, uh, go network. And a lot of us are sitting there going, Oh my God, many of us just can't do it. We don't have it in us or we, uh, we could do it. We're excited to do it. We just don't know where to go. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And I guess, I guess the first question I have for you, Adam, is you know, when it comes to business, when it comes to marketing, we hear this word network, growing a network. Everyone's heard it before. Some of us are scared about it. I mean, what does this really mean? First question, what does networking really mean? Maybe deconstruct it for us, unpack it for us. And then how, how do we make this something that, that we, can, we can actually do without feeling scared or anxious about it? So what it means is for me, when I first started as a, an associate, and ultimately I became a partner with this solo that I was practicing with uh, from the get-go as soon as I graduated law school and passed the bar, One of the things I wanted to learn how to do was how could I build a set of people that continually referred me business? I mean, people that uh, I really liked, uh, I liked doing business with, I helped. And so I started reading all kinds of books. And one of the first books I got my hands on was how to start a small law firm or something like that. I think it was put out by the ABA and I bought it before I even graduated law school and started reading it. Because one of the things that we don't really understand, and you hit it on the head, is that when you get out of law school, you really don't know what you're doing. I mean, you don't really know how to practice law, but then the flip side is you have no clue about business. And one of my main missions here with Esquire Academy and everything I'm doing is to teach people how to be in business, how to be a business person, how to be an entrepreneur. And one of the things I read in a Brian Tracy book about 20 some years ago was this idea. And it hit me pretty hard because I was an associate shortly after that. And it said, it doesn't matter if you're an employee, if you own a business, uh, or, or you're a secretary, you have a business unto yourself. Yeah. The services that you're selling a law firm or the services you're selling clients as a lawyer, uh, you are in business no matter what. So if, even if you're in a medium sized firm, your associate, a big, big law, uh, feel for you if you're there. Um, you still have a business unto yourself and there's no reason why you can't grow a community of people that want to send you business. Now I understand people are going to say to me and they have said to me, I don't have time to do this. 
that's understandable too. But there's some things you could do on social media that don't take a long time. And I guarantee you that every single person listening here spends time on social media every day. And if you don't, and you're that busy, yeah. then you're probably making you, a very good living. You know what? What and what's interesting about businesses and this it's so specialized. So in the same way we subject matter experts in the law think of within transactional law, there's there's so many different areas. There's there's M and A work, there's licensing work. You know, someone else would just say, Well, those are just agreements, they're all the same thing. No way, there's all those different flavors of it. There's all those different flavors of of IP, there's all those different flavors of real estate law and so on. And actual attorneys specialize in these different areas, while a non lawyer would just say, Well, that's just Real estate law, that's just transactional law. Right. Well, it's the same thing that goes for business. You know, we as lawyers can say, well, it's just business, it's just marketing. But there's so many different specializations to it and layers to it, whether it's it's copywriting, whether it's public relations, whether it's marketing, whether it's advertising. Like those are four distinct skill sets. Yep. And so, you know, one thing that that I've I bring that up just because those are the type of things we need to recognize as attorneys when we're starting a business that you just don't go do business. Right. Um, and this goes to your point that you can delegate some of this or appreciate where you're good at, appreciate where you're not good at, find people who can help you, find tools that can help you. And, but understanding all the different nuances of business, I think is, is a first step to that. Well, and we're in, in uh, key number five in, in, in a few episodes from now, we're going to talk about automating and why yeah. you should do it no matter who you are, what you are. I don't care. You, you should start to automate stuff if you can and if you have the ability to do that. But one of the things, uh, as far as I was concerned back in the day and even now, uh, was that I wanted to learn how to be in business. And so when, when yeah. I say that they don't teach this in law school, most law schools don't. Now, there are some that have a few small classes about this, but even then, when I got out, I knew some stuff about business because my mother had a real estate brokerage for a long time and I worked in, in the summertime uh, as a realtor for her and helped her in all aspects of her business. And, you know, it goes back to uh, 12 years old, I was pushing a lawnmower around the street cutting lawns. And so I, I had an innate desire to make money and be in business. And some people just have never had any experience with that. So one of the things about this key, number three, is that... I implore you to continue to grow and learn in every aspect of your career and life. I mean, that's one of the yeah. reasons I, I started teaching attorneys because I, I knew that there was just such this disconnect from the technical aspects of practicing law and then the business aspects of practicing law. And, right. and when I talk about in uh, my book, Raising the Bar, I talk about the fact that the, the practice of law has become a business. It has, but there is a differentiation there I need to, to, to tell you because I've had some people that are not business people bring that up and they say, well, you say that the practice of law is a business now, but then you're talking about being in, well, it, it has not, it was a profession, right? We were honored and respected and now not so much. And it's all about making money. That's what, when I make the differentiation, it's not just about making money. Clearly you want to make yeah. money as a lawyer. You want to do well, but your focus should be about the customer. And yeah. then what I broke it down to from the very beginning is who is my ideal customer? And I know Casey and I have been through this uh, in our own businesses and I've done it for every single business I've ever owned. And I've owned multiple businesses over the years, very different businesses, but who is your ideal customer? Who is that person yeah. uh, to you? What do they represent? Uh, what do they look like? And I'm not talking about their physical looks. I'm talking about what do they look like in terms of their attitude? What do they do? Where do they hang out? Uh, what kind of person are they in general? And right. I started doing this for real estate agents because the, that was the main crux of our business uh, is title company and, and a real estate attorney for so many years. And I started looking at, well, what kind of realtors do I want to deal with? And one of the things that really came through to me was people that appreciated what I did, people that knew that I knew what I was doing and, and appreciated the, the kind of job I did for them and appreciated that I was there to help them yeah. anytime they needed help. And yeah. then I just, you know, people that didn't have a problem with me getting paid what I, I thought I deserved. And, and I broke all this stuff down. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a, a great book called Attracting Perfect Customers. And it's very aligned with what I was learning back when I read it, I don't know yeah. how long ago. Uh, and I wholeheartedly recommend that. And, and we'll put that information in the show notes and you'll see a picture of it or, or you already have. Our video editor will make sure there's a picture of it there. But um, 
that book really changed me. It, re- yeah. it really changed me in a way. You know what? I can be out networking, and I was. I was out networking, Casey, three, four, five days yeah. a week, sometimes yeah. twice a day. I mean, yeah. I moved my law office in this building in downtown Fort Lauderdale where my private club was that I belonged to. And I was there every single day. We were spending yeah. six, $700 a month there because I was there networking, taking people to lunch. And, and my goal was to create and attract perfect clients because you can attract a ton of business. Yeah. Can, and I did. Before I knew these principles, I had a, a business that made a really great amount of money, but I was getting these clients who were just assholes. Yeah. They were, they didn't, they didn't want to pay me on time. They didn't, yeah. They, they just were difficult. I mean, I can run through the gamut, but one of the things I learned in that was when those people come into your world, they will show you what you really want to create, yeah. to attract. So, Isn't it crazy? It, it's a new take on networking. I'm hearing you saying it's, and, and you and I have talked about this before, but I think people quake in their boots and many, many of the listeners may, may feel this anxiety around networking because you have to go out. You may be an introvert or maybe you're an extrovert, but you just don't have the time or you're tired or you want to be with your kids and not out at, at getting a cocktail, but, or maybe you do, but, but maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's more of a, I, I, where I've had this shift with the, with networking is it, it starts within. It starts with not just going out there to find someone, to find a client so you can make money because really what that's going to do is you're going to get people that you don't like. And I hear it all the time. I hate my clients. I don't feel a connection with my client. And I think the first part that if there's really any takeaway from, from this episode for, for listeners, it's that imagine that ideal client. Mm, and then yeah imagine it, start it, visualize it, and then go, go to places, whether even it's on LinkedIn, whether it's writing thought pieces and start attracting that. And that ideal client, I've done these exercises. I mean, it sounds a little woo woo, but you want to say things like, I want people who appreciate me. I want people who don't mind paying me, who want to pay me, who view it as an investment, who are happy to pay me because I've provided value. I want people who are not late with their payments. I want people who are collaborative. You know, and I know people may roll their eyes going, really, a client who's happy to pay a lawyer? But, I mean, you think yeah. about it. That goes back to your point of a profession where there was a point where lawyers were helpers. They weren't just in it for the money. And so, Well, we, we I called think, ourselves counselors at law, too. And, right. and a lot of people now are, are embracing that term because... Because that's all we really do. Yeah. We counsel people on their problems. And so yeah. when I, man, this is, this is just an interesting conversation because ultimately I'm creating a whole online course just about this because yeah. it is that important. And so in 20 yeah. minutes here, we're going to cover as many topics as we can. But when I started to realize that I was out networking a lot and I was attracting, you know, clients, they were okay clients, <laughs> some of them. Some were good clients. Some were really bad clients. And I started to rank them and I fired some of the clients. And yeah, people would look at me and say, you're firing your clients. How can you do that? Because I understand if I'm putting attention on what I want in the world, and that is these ideal clients, they're going to come. And so then let's talk, take it to the next step. Because I know, Casey, you are chomping at the bit for me to talk about how to build a network. How can you build a network in the world of people that want to refer you business? So how'd you know that was my next question? Because you've been asking me and I've been skirting it on more important topics as far as I'm concerned, but I I know that this is where the rubber meets the road. But if you're not attracting your ideal clients, that, that has to be the first step. And so, you know, we will spend a few episodes on talking about how to start that process. But for now, understand that you have to look at what you want and put your attention on what you want and, and figure out what it is you don't want to. And, and it's the same thing that happens when you go through life with a significant other. You know, you, you run into all of these people, women or men, depending on who you like, who really, you know, they may have some qualities, but then on the flip side, they're like, oh, God, whatever it is. And I'm not going to go into that, but it's the same process yeah, where, yeah. okay, I've had these clients that I don't really like. Well, okay, then they're going to show me the opposite of what I do want. And here's what I want. So, I took that information and I, and I pictured these people finding me yeah. and me being there to find them and, and being, as you and I have talked about in, in that exact book, Attracting Perfect Customers, talks about being the lighthouse, yeah. putting out the light, be like the light that. of the lighthouse where you're attracting these people that you really want. And, and so then uh, I had already 
been building this network, but that really shifted how I did it after that. And, and what I started doing was getting out of my shell, which I had some of, uh, when I first started practicing law, because when you're new, you know, you're, you're uh, yeah. fearful and, uh, do I really know the answers to questions? And, and I just didn't care at that point. I'm like, look, I, I'm going to get out and build this network. And, um, one of the things I started doing was going to everything that I had time for. Yeah. Going to as many meetings as I had time for where those ideal clients might be and then uh, gravitating to people that could be good referral partners for me or people that could just refer me business uh, and, and then figuring out how to help them in ways where I could educate them. And that's another conversation into itself. But one of the things that most people do is when they go out and network and this is, you know, I, I before I started networking, I, read probably 20 books on networking. I got my hands on every single book and this was before e-readers. This was 20 years ago and got my hands on every book I could find out about. Wow, how do I network and, and what am I going to do when I meet people? And, and one of the failings that people have is that they go out and they meet someone that could be a, a, an ideal uh, referral partner for them and then they never follow up with them. So I had a friend who was a banker who's now passed, man, he, he died in his fifties and it was just totally shocking. But this was, this guy was a master networker and he prided himself on this box of business cards, boxes of business cards of all these people that he met. And I knew that he didn't do anything with those business cards other than he, it was his trophy. It was his badge of honor that he had been out networking so much that he had met all these people. And I said, what did you do with those business cards when you came back from your your networking yeah. thing. What did you do with them? Because that's really the most important part is what do you do with the contacts, the people that you meet? That's right. So one of the things that you can start to look at is figuring out how to follow up with those people. And every single person I talk to that uh, I talk to about consulting or I've coached or been a mentor to, I tell them this. If you're not following up with someone that you met that you think could be a good referral partner, then why did you waste your time yeah. out networking? Yeah. Really? That's true. Yeah. I mean, so I had met so many people and it's like, so what? Yeah. So what that I've met all these people? What do you do after that? So when I met realtors, when I met mortgage people, when I met other attorneys that I think could have been good partners for me to refer business to and back and forth, because really that's what building a network is about is about you getting uh, referrals if possible, but then you always having those people as a part of your community, as what they call a, your sphere of influence where yeah. you can then always be wanting to refer them business. And, and so I was always aware of the people that I liked and that I connected with in a deep way and that I saw right. often at the various functions because like I, I joined this club in downtown Fort Lauderdale called the Tower Club. And man, it was amazing to be part of that club because it was a small group of about a thousand people total, but you know, there was only a couple hundred people out networking normally in that kind of number. Yeah. And I'd get to know them. And I, I still have such amazing friends from that club that I talk to all the time. And those people there represented like a family to me. Yeah. And I was always willing to be on the lookout for a referral that I could give anybody that was in that family or anybody that I knew. Like some people would always reach out to me because they, they knew I had integrity and I was honest and that if I'm going to refer someone else, they know that they've been vetted. Right, Casey? I mean, they know that I've vetted them. Yeah. I think and, what's important there, and I've been part of those, those networking groups and you think you're going to get a bunch of leads and then you don't get leads and you say, what's going on? And it hit me. I just said, I'm with the wrong people. I like them. They're, I, I like knowing them, but these are people who are, you know, uh, insurance agents, uh, HR people or whoever yeah. I was with. And you know what? They're not really going to send, they just don't have that business. Uh, so there's that connecting, but there's also that idea that to be, when it comes to networking, we think that we're going out there and you kind of check the box, you get the business cards, you have your drinks, you go out on a, a, a 6 p.m. at night. That it, It's more quality over quantity. And so that's where I think the anxiety comes from is I, it's going to take time. I have to schmooze with people. I have to make conversation. And what we're saying is when you visualize your ideal client, when you feel really good about it, you start attracting those people to you, but you also want to get smart about who do you hang out with. Maybe it's 
it's hanging out on, on social network. It's, it's being in LinkedIn. It's being in mastermind groups. It's, it's doing your own videos. It's creating a YouTube channel. Um, it's, it's certain ABA events, but there's sort of this generic idea of networking and just going out there. And if you don't do the work beforehand, and if you don't think smart about the people who are in that group, you're going, you're, you're still, you may still get crickets. Well, and yes, and you're right. And the fact is it's about building relationships with these people becoming friends with these people and yeah. figuring out what you can do if they are someone that, that is part of your referral network, your sphere of influence, how to train them too, how to educate them on how to do biz, better business, That's whatever right. that might be. And, and there's a lot more we're going to get into it in this uh, as we get going, but it's about creating relationships, it's not about exchanging cards. It's not, it's, it's not, not about giving someone your card thinking, oh my God, this person's gonna send me a referral. It does take time, it takes time. But then the flip side is the follow-up. If you do meet someone like an attorney that could refer you business, uh, what are you gonna do with them? Yeah. What's the plan for them after you meet them? And so That's one of the right. things I used to do is I used to come back to the office, because I, I don't do a lot of networking anymore. I do online networking, it's through LinkedIn, it's through word of mouth, and it's through me looking up people in this space. Right and Casey does it as well, where we reach out to people uh, through a phone call or an email. But after a while, I'd done so much networking that I didn't have to do anymore because I just had this sphere of influence where it was just a, a machine. It was like a yeah. referral machine. But yeah. one of the things that I started doing was sending, a, well, having my paralegal or my secretary, who, whatever I had at the time, or one of them, um, send a letter to them directly after that says, hey, it was great to meet you at so-and-so function. And you can automate this too now, Casey. I mean, you can, where right. you can put it in the system and you can say, uh, here's where I met them and here's the date and here's the function. And it will pump out a letter to them. You can have your secretary do this and it saves everybody time so it's not going into Word, blah, blah, blah. No, you can automate this. And, but then what's the next touch after that? Are you going to take them to coffee? Yeah. If there's someone that really could send you business, you better be doing something with them. I mean, I was taking people golfing if they were like a banker or someone that had, had an opportunity to send me a lot of business or hedge funds or something like that. And you know what? The, another thing that I like in that case is, is remembering what you talked about and then sending them, becoming kind of a thought leader, sending them information about that, that may be top of mind for them. So for example, if they're interested in Brexit or if they're interested in, in internet privacy and what's going on, or if they're interested in something, uh, some topic, whether personally or professionally, you can automate this and follow up and say, hey, I remember that conversation we had where we talked about the legal ramifications of Brexit. Um, here's a cool article I found in Harvard Business Review or on Forbes. Hope you enjoy it. One of the things and, I did, Casey, was I would get my secretary to put these people into a, a, an online database. And then once they did that, they would, they'd return the cards to me and they send these letters out. And I would go in and on the, on the business cards, I would take notes about, are they married? Did they have children? What did we talk about? What, what, was their, yeah. uh, what was the conversation about in following up with them? And that way I could pull, if I did schedule something with them, I could pull those notes up and say, okay, this person specializes in this kind of real estate and, you know, okay, is their office is here, whatever yeah. it was, so that it, I could follow up with them on something like that. And the, the article idea you have, uh, it, 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 I've done it many times where yeah. you just eat, well, you can email it now, but back in the day, I used to print stuff out of the business journals and yeah. stuff, and I would send it to people just to follow up on the conversation so that they would yeah. have some, some basis of understanding that I did actually listen to them, which most That's people right. don't. They're too well, it shares, it's, it's, it's exponential there. You, you listen to them, you care about what they're interested in, you remembered it. Uh, and then they do the same with you. So that's it. And so let's wrap this episode up by saying always continue to learn and grow. There's so much more to talk about networking. We can't really talk about so much in 20 minutes. We hit a lot of, of topics today on terms of how to get started at least. And, yeah. and uh, if you're interested, there's the a website that I have for this new product that's uh, in development and I'm going to start recording soon, idealclientformula.com. Yeah. Uh, check that out and there's, there'll be some freebies there. And if you sign up, you'll get some freebies now, but regardless, um, keep with us in this podcast because we're going to continue talking about this because I absolutely love networking and I know how to do it. I am a, a, literally a master networker. I'm not pointing, uh, pat, patting myself on the back, but, but I've spent yeah. tens of thousands of hours on networking. If, if, if that much, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but I was, I spent so much time networking that I really know how to do it and I built my business around it. And so stick with us on this because we are going to touch on this a lot more because there's so much more to learn here. And so in the, in the, 
Go ahead, and Jason. I think, yeah, and, and I, we're, we're closing on this episode. Please join us for the next one. I just want to say, you know, one of the main reasons why many of us don't love the law, why we want to get out, I see it, because as you all know, I help people leave the law. But one of the main reasons why is we're just, we're not making enough money. Yep. It's hard to get clients. It's hard to get good clients. I don't like my clients. My whole sense of purpose of being a lawyer is, is non-existent um, or just isn't clear to me anymore. And, and what Adam, so Adam, what, what you really are on a mission to do is to not let people go down that path where they are feeling that, but to, to handle the issue more upstream earlier to show them how there's a whole new idea on, on finding clients, on connecting with people that not only will they pay you, but that attorneys can really love and feel good about the practice because they're going to really enjoy helping these people. And, there is a, a world that's a point of that's the most important to me. Yeah. Yes. There's a world of knowledge that I can impart to all of you. Yeah. And that is because I lived it. And um, yeah. the fact is that there is ways of setting up a law practice that where you could actually really enjoy it and, and work a lot less, which people look at me, attorneys look at me and say, no, that's not possible. And I said, it is because I learned how to do it from others. And I had a lot of good mentors and coaches. Um, but good. regardless, never stop learning. I'll put a couple other key books down underneath here. If you want to start to learn more about networking and also check out that website, I've got it. Yeah. And then I've got stuff in Esquire Academy and I've got stuff in my raising the bar book because it is that important to being in love with the law or even liking it. Um, it learning how to be a business person doesn't yeah. matter. I mean, you've got to be a business person. I don't care what kind of job you hold in the law. So in the next episode, we're going to hit key number four. We're going to talk more about why meditation and being present in life is a key to really loving the law. And it was a definite key for me and, and Casey and I both meditate and we uh, both try to live in the present moment as much as possible because we both understand the need for it. And, and as we get going here, we're going to teach a lot more about all of this. But we appreciate you being here. We uh, thank you for your time. And we hope that you'll send us some questions if you have any. Uh, Casey, you have any parting thoughts? Everybody, thank you very much. This networking thing I hear all the time. Please re-listen to this, this podcast. Email us with any questions. Email Adam directly for any other tips and tricks. Uh, check out his courses. He goes into much more detail about all this. I really appreciate you guys being part of the community, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.